الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما يا معشر المسلمين رحكم الله قد ورد في الحبر أن سيد البشر وشفي أمتي في يوم المخشر سيد الأشراف ومتمم مكارم الأحلاك والأوصاف سيد العرب والعجم سيدنا محمد ابن عبد الله ابن عبد المطلب ابن هاشم ابن عبد مناف أنه كان سعيد الخطيب على المنبر ثم حتب فلا يتكلم نهدكم ومن تكلم فقد لغى ومن لغى فلا سواب جمعة له أنستوا رحكم الله فاستمعوا غفر الله لنا ولكم ولوالدينا ولوالديكم ولأستاذينا ولأستاذيكم ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وعباد الله الذين اصطفى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا وتسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم الحمد لله بريز الله سبحانه وتعالى في مكي بصر وأستبيا for the suspicious waqt of Yawm al And alhamdulillah, once again, we are honored to have amongst us our respected Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman of the Gift of the Givers Foundation. We thank Dr. Imtiaz for acceding to our request. Dr. Imtiaz will deliver the pre khutbah talk, inshallah. Before we hand over to Dr. Imtiaz, just a reminder, brothers, please donate generously towards the Saf to Saf maintenance collection of the masjid, as well as the tents outside, if you don't get the chance inside the masjid. Jazakumullah wa khayran. Just a reminder, please fill the masjid from the front. I still see there are a lot of gaps here downstairs. Please fill the masjid from the front. Men are requested to be seated downstairs before going upstairs and outside the masjid. Jazakumullah wa khayran. A reminder that the upstairs facilities on the right-hand side and the wudu khana upstairs are reserved only for females. Jazakumullah wa khayran. Jazak. The other inspector to do, I'll now hand over to our doctor, respect, respected Dr. Indias, Fadal Fadal Mashkura. Jazakallah, <laughs> Maulana. Thank you, Masjid Committee. I don't want to steal anybody's turn to speak, but thank you for the invite. So this is very, very unexpected. At this part of the year, and for a large part of this year, of last year, the thoughts have been worrying South Africans and the country at large. Is there any hope? Is there a future? Do Muslims we pack up and run away? Those kind of thoughts should not come from Muslims. Muslims are the ones that lead from the front. The Prophet said, we are witnesses to the nations. We sent you to enjoin good and to forbid evil. Allah said, if Allah helps you, none can overcome you. If he forsakes you, who is after that, that can help you. And Allah then let believers put their trust. You see, it's very easy to say, I have Iman, I pray five times a day, I go for Umrah, I go for Hajj, I do this, that and the other. 
but your faith will be ought to be known when the test is put in front of you <coughs> and that is the level of understanding can you respond to the test or at the first event you're going to run away what Quran tells you you can't run away from death it will find you even in towers up high there's a story of a South African who left the country because of crime and said he wants to go to the UK a week later he was murdered in the UK you see we can't run away from what is destined what we can do is make sure that things change in the purpose for the better Allah will never change the condition of a people unless they change it themselves I want to come back to what role we as Muslims have to play but before I get to that why do many of us want to leave is it because we are afraid good reason is it because we want a greater future good reason or is it because we can't make 15 to 20 million or 50 million extra for the year is it because of economic reasons let's be honest let's question ourselves honestly you know there's a we have a teaching that what you don't spend is not yours so I can give you two billion rand today and say stay in South Africa I'm giving two billion rand please tell me how many lifetimes you're gonna to need to spend that money you can have a house here a house somewhere else a place in Dubai a house somewhere else a yacht 15 cars but you can only sleep in one bed you can only eat three meals a day as you get older you eat more you get sick you'll end up in hospital you can only drive one car you have 15 you're gonna change the battery it dies so Allah has said everything in moderation everything he says clearly whatever is excess spent I'm telling you just now why I'm telling you all these points we can make as much as we want and if many of you remember the great Sufi scholar who came to South Africa in the 70s Professor Fazul Rahman Ansari what was his teaching that our display and our exhibition of wealth is something that's going to destroy us he didn't, his words did not go wrong absolutely correct in what he said but what all the challenges that is insurmountable we need to go back to the basics and this place this mosque is a Sufi mosque there's a Sufi tomb in the back here for us who understand Sufism and Tariqa we will understand how to deal with the problems of the country in the world so let me go back and tell you my story how gift of the givers was so that's not important what's important is the story behind gift of the givers you see the organization was formed in August 6th August 1992 through the instruction of a Sufi master in Turkey but to me it actually started in 1985 and I need you to understand the thread of what I'm saying so in 1985 I'm this young guy doing internship in King Edward Hospital in Durban and I say to myself at the end of this year I'm going to become a medical officer and then I'm going to be a registrar and then I'm going to be a specialist in internal medicine those were my thoughts Allah had other plans I there was no post for me to study further in that time there was not much opportunity so I didn't become a medical officer didn't have a chance to become a registrar I never became a physician never had that opportunity and I had two choices either I can cartwheel and sad and be depressed and cry and mope and whine that I didn't get this post to be a medical officer or I can look at it alternatively and say but Allah has maybe something better for me you see when you have challenges you have to look at what looks evil or bad and look for the good in it as Muslims we know we don't pray for what we want we pray for what is good for us because what we want may not necessarily be good for us so when things don't work out always go back maybe shukran Allah it was for a very good reason it didn't happen so I didn't get this post and I moved from Dermot to Peter Marisburg to start private practice as a response to not being negative Allah sends an Afrikaner man remember this is pre the new dispensation 
It is the time of apartheid. The NGK church said, Khoswat Sakhafar, Roy Sakhafar, and Muslim Sakhafar. It's a time there was oppression for white and African and Christian. And Allah sends a white Africana Christian to Peter Marisburg the same week that I'm in Peter Marisburg. My butcher comes to me, the neighbor, my neighbor is a butcher, comes to me and said, I got a guy here. He's an Africana guy. He came to teach French at the university. He needs a doctor. So Muller and I meet. An open-mindedness, no prejudice, no judgmental behavior is critical of Muslim thought. So the man comes and he says, I'll be your patient. So I keep treating him. And he says one day, and it's very important, he says, I want to share my story with you. I think we know each other quite well as doctor and patient after so many months. I want to share a story with you. He says, I was walking through the streets of New York and I was down, depressed, dejected. My soul felt empty, much of what many South Africans have been feeling. And he said, in the distance, I see a man. And he looks at me. I don't know this man. I've never seen him before. But my heart tells me, follow the man. Islamic teaching applies to all human beings. The teaching is very clear. Always listen to your heart when you're not sure of something. Because you see, non-Muslim hasn't been created by another God. We've all been created by the same God. So the moral is the same. The spirituality is the same. The spirit is the same. The mindset is the same. There's no different, two different thoughts. It's one God. He's got the same personality. He puts that same personality into every human being. So the man says, I follow my heart. And I follow this man. And this man walks into St. John the Divine, a big church in New York, which I visited. And he says, I get a shock. The man that I was following is a Sufi master, a Turkish Sufi master in spirituality. He says, I get a bigger shock. The Sufi master starts making a zikr in St. John the Divine, a church in New York. He says, I get a third big shock. The Jewish rabbi, the Christian priest, the Hindu pandit, those who say they don't believe in God Almighty, were they all join the zikr. And they participate in the unity of God Almighty. You see, we are too late. It's easy to live out. Ah, don't say Merry Christmas. Don't say Happy New Year. What? You're going to lose faith by saying hey, Merry Christmas? It must be the dumbest thing I've ever heard in the country. Spirituality teaches us to show good world to any human being. It's the spiritual of the law. It's better than the letter of the law. When you show good world to people, the prophet stood up for a funeral of a Jew. What's more important? That or saying Merry Christmas? What is weightier? here? So the Christian elders of the church in those days in St. John the Divine understood the unity of religion. The unity of God, the unity of mankind, have we as Muslims understood that? Islam is about reflection. New Year's resolutions is about reflections, about thinking. So Mullah and I, I'm surprised. I said, Mullah, are you sure you saw all this? He said, yes, I saw all this. And my soul got uplifted. We're speaking. And Mullah tells me, after a few more consultations, you need to go to Turkey. So I said, Mala, it's 1986. I still haven't seen Cape Town. When I'm going to see Turkey? As a non-Muslim, he says, what God wills happens. There's a time and a place. August 91, I landed up in Turkey. It's a long story. But I get to Turkey, what Mala saw in New York, what brothers saw in a church, I saw in a Sufi Tarika in Istanbul. This was post-Gulf War. The world was polarized. Samuel Huntington spoke of a clash of civilizations. And as my wife and I walk into this place, to be honest, I thought we came to the wrong place. 
Americans, Russians, Europeans, Brazilians, Mexico, Argentina, Africa, Australia, Germany, Sweden, New Zealand, India, everybody in a Muslim holy place. Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, and those who don't believe in a Muslim holy place. And I couldn't understand this. Nobody was judgmental. The Sufi Sheikh showed what the Prophet taught love for even the enemy. And everybody was embraced. What an open heart. It didn't matter what you believed. The principle of Islam and spirituality and tariqa and Sufism is love. Unconditional love. So two people from two tariqas were speaking. And you know, in different tariqas, we had different kind of outfits. Yellow, green, long sleeves, short sleeves. So the guys with the long sleeves were standing and talking to the other people. And the one guy tells him, why you got long sleeves? So he said, in our tariqa, in our sleeves, we take the faults of the people and we hide it inside here. We love to broadcast the faults of people. Makes us feel very good that we know something negative about somebody else. Yet Allah tells you to conceal the faults of someone in here. He will conceal your faults in this world, in the year after. We all have faith. We all pray five times a day. It's mere theoretical service. Nothing practical. No implementation of what we do in practice of going to Umrah and for Hajj. We need to be very serious about what we do and how we do things. So everybody's embraced. Christians, Jews, Hindus and Muslims. And the man says we hide the stuff inside the sleeves. He said, but you, you got short sleeves, like I'm dressed. He said, you got no sleeves. So what's your story? He said, we don't see long sleeves. We don't need long sleeves because we don't see the faults of others. This is Islam at its best. So anyway, I see the teacher. I fall in love and I go back to South Africa. At that point, I don't understand Sufism. I don't understand Tariqa. The only person I knew in contact with Tariqa was from this mosque. A lady called Babi Sab, based in Sufi Mosque in Pretoria, I in Peter Marisburg. And she used to talk to me all the time about the saints, but I still didn't understand. In any case, that same in 92, I went for Hajj. I was standing outside the tomb of the Holy Prophet Sallam, and said, Prophet Sallam, look here, I'm not sure about this business of Sufism and Tariqa. If it's meant to me, I need to go back. 6th August, 92. Again, it's a long story. I go back. I get there Thursday night after the zikr, 10 o'clock. The sheikh suddenly gets up after the zikr, no, not standing up, sitting, and makes eye contact with me and I'm in the other part of the room. He speaks in fluent Turkish. I don't understand a word of Turkish, but I understood every single word that he said. He said, my son, I'm not asking you. I'm instructing you to form an organization. The name in Arabic will be Waqful Waqifin. Translated, gift of the givers. You will serve all people of all races, all religions, all colors, all classes, all cultures, of any geographical location and of any political affiliation. But you will serve them unconditionally. You will expect nothing in return, not even a thank you. This is an instruction for you for the rest of your life. Serve people with love, kindness, compassion, and mercy. And remember, the dignity of people is foremost. Brothers and sisters, this is the most significant, most important message. The dignity of people is foremost. No country will collapse because people are hungry. People have been hungry for years. As I'm talking to you right now, they die in the Eastern Cape because of hunger. There's hungry tore out. You go to the fires now. People say, don't worry about a shack. Give me food because they're hungry. We've got five fires right now in Cape Town. 
and people say, give me food. Racism, we got it for hundreds of years. Not going to destroy the country. Class difference, not going to destroy the country. What will destroy the country is when people lose dignity. When you are totally humiliated. When there's nothing left, there's nothing to lose because you've lost everything. There's no limit to the amount of negative energy that can come because of that. As Muslims, what have we done to restore the dignity of people in this country? You see, when you talk to a Muslim, sorry, I'm a very blunt guy. When you talk to a Muslim, uh, are you taking zakat? Did the Palestinians give you business? Did the Sunnians give you business? Did the Afghanis give you business? Did the Iraqis and the Pakistanis give you business? No. <laughs> business came from the indigent poor people of this country. But Allah in his wisdom said only 2.5%. Only 2.5%. From your wealth you can take and give Muslims wherever you want, no problem. You got 97.5% other percent. How much of that do you deploy in upgrading the cost of the living standards of people in our country? The people from which you make your money. Allah is very just. The Prophet taught justice. He taught social virtue. He spoke about responsibility. So go back and reflect about dignity. I'm coming back to one more point. Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Provide water to the thirsty. I mean, everything that you do, be the best at what you do. No shortcuts. Be the best at what you do. Why? Not because of ego. If anything destroys a nation, a country, a people, a business, a society, it's ego. And the more money we have, the more it gets to the top. Who gave you that money? You, out of your cleverness, got it? Everything is from Allah. By His grace, He has bestowed that upon you. And He tells you whatever access you got, spend it for others. Remember two billion rand story? I can give you two billion rand. What you don't spend is not yours. And then He went on to say, again, this is an instruction for you for the rest of your life. I was 30 years old then. I didn't know what would happen. He gave me the instruction and then he said the most important point. Remember my son that whatever you do is done through you and not by you. Your grace, your money, your status, your house, your car, your children, everything has come as a grace from Allah. The least you can do out of gratitude is to give back to all other creation. The creation that he created, not some other God. That are his people. That are his banda in different religions. That are suffering. The Prophet didn't say, I'm a Muslim. He said, have the suffering. Have the oppressed. Visit the sick. Did he say, visit the Muslim sick? Visit, have the Muslim oppressed? Have the Muslim? No. The Prophet was sent as Rahmatan Lil Alameen. All creation, not Muslim. Khairunas, Mayan Faunas. Best among people are those who benefit mankind. So the teacher gave this instruction and asked him, how is it when you speak Turkish, I understand, and other people speak Turkish, I don't understand. He said, my son, when the hearts connect and the souls connect, <laughs> the words become understandable. I told him, now we got a bit of a problem here. You see, I'm a doctor. I'm in private practice in a place called Peter Marisburg in South Africa, and I've got three surgeries. So what you want me to do, and when am I supposed to do this? After hours, long weekends, public holidays, when? He told me one line. You will know for 30 years. I do know what to do, how to do, what not to do, what to touch, when to go, when not to go. In fact, that 6th of August night when I walked out of the door from the Tarika, it came to me the same night, respond to the civil war in Bosnia. The same month, not even six months later, I took in 32 containers of aid. 
into Bosnia. Three months later, we took in eight containers of winter items. And January 93, we designed the world's first containerized mobile hospital. A product of South African engineering, South African technology, built in Africa and taken into Europe. And that was a gift. Coming back, and my time is almost up. You see, we're very worried about the situation in this country. I told you, you can't run away from debt. Life is about helping others. It's about increasing the dignity and improving the dignity of people. They've played their part. How did they play their part? And I want you to, I'm going to finish off here. You see, the most important, significant event in the history of South Africa is 27 April 1994. Not because elections took place that day. Not because that the whole world focused on our country. Not because Mandela became a president after that. No. That was not the significance. You see, the whole world, the media came here with their war rooms. They were expecting to see bloodletting, violence, vengeance, revenge. They were expecting that from 40 million people at that time. All of you, remember? Stockpile your food, fill your house, keep your passport ready, jewelry, diamonds, get ready to run from the country. That's what's going to happen. It was the most boring incident in the world media. Nothing happened. People stood in long queues to vote. In nothing that happened, actually everything happened. Because those who were oppressed for years, those whose families dis disappeared with, and had detention without trial, whose families were missing, up to now today they don't know where the people are. But all the oppression, all the hardship and all the difficulty, they showed a true human character. We will not burn the country. We will not take revenge. We will not have vengeance. We will not destroy. We will forgive, we will have patience, we will have faith. Have we responded to that call in any way? I come from countries where people in the same religion, same color, same neighborhood, same street, same village, tear each other apart and they're from the same religion. Even as Muslims, they tear themselves apart. Do you think you can fix that in three or four hundred years? Never. Revenge never goes away. Yet, ordinary people in the townships showed the quality and the character of their faith. We have not responded to that, brothers and sisters. Make 2023 the year that you will change your mindset and your thinking. Stop thinking zakat only. If it was your child, what would you do? My teams, when they go out to help people, they ask me, what must we do? I tell them one line. If it's your child, your wife, your father, what will you do? No further questions. You see, people keep asking me, why do I do what I do all the time? Yes, I took bayat. I took a spiritual instruction, which I have to follow and I can't go against. But from my own point of view, when my child is hungry, I have a real problem because I don't know what to give her to eat. There's too much food in the cupboard. There's a fridge and another fridge, and a deep freeze, and other cupboards full, and you think, oops, what are you going to eat here? In Eastern Cape, do you know why the children are dying of hunger? Because the parents don't bring them to hospital in time. Why do they not bring them to hospital in time? Because it's quite normal for people to be hungry in the Eastern Cape. So if they don't eat, the children don't eat. And when they come to the clinic, it's too late because the adult can survive and the child can't survive. And when that reaches boiling point, when children die from starvation, when you go to tell a mother, I'm sorry, your child fell down a put toilet and died in feces. How would that, you'll take that if it happened to one of your children? That you go to hospital and you're turned down because there's no facilities. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it's time to employ our wealth to fix the ills of this country.
You're going to tell me you pay taxes. Yes, you pay taxes. A lot of us don't even pay taxes properly, let's be honest. You're paying VAT and you're paying the fuel levy and all this. Other. That's true. Let's say we do everything 100% correct. But 7 million people's taxes can't look after 65 million people. It's impossible. Whether the Americans, the Germans, the Canadians, the Australians rent this country, we all going to have the same problem. 7 million people's taxes cannot look after 65 million people. If that's the case, the Quran will have given no instructions about social service. It would have said, let governments take care of people. It's emphasized social service over and over and over again because there's always going to be this difference. Share whatever you want. Earn whatever you want. Love whatever you want. But don't forget about the dignity of the people in this country. We can do it together. We can make that change. We can overcome all burdens and all challenges. And we can fix this country. This country belongs to you and me and 65 million people. It doesn't belong to the government. It's our country. We stand together and we fix it. Either you have a positive attitude or just fall by the wayside. Jazakallah for the time. I need you to have mindset change and let's do this together. See, corporate South Africa, when the, when the, when the COVID came and the floods came, corporate South Africa, non-Muslims called and said, forget about a tax certificate. Forget about BE points. What must we do to change, the hope, bring hope to this country and to save the lives of our people? 11 April, and this is the last point, 11 April 2022, and in the evening, when the flood waters rose eight meters in 45 minutes, I was expecting people to say, I need a helicopter, I need a boat, I need a diver, I need a forklift, I need an excavator. No such calls. The only calls came from corporate South Africa, non-Muslims. What do you need and how much do you need? Not in business hours. They called one o'clock in the morning. So I asked them, are you guys feeling well? They said, why? I said, since when has corporate South Africa stayed away at night, stayed awake at night to give away money? Who should be leading? Where's the Muslims? Do we respond to the fires? Do we respond to the floods? No, Palestine had a bomb. Syria had a bomb. Nobody's saying don't have your brothers and sisters. It starts at home. Jazakallah. Asalaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So Jazakumullah khair al jazaa to Dr. Imtiaz for sharing his experience and his wisdom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him and the gift of the Givers Foundation many years to continue, inshallah. Ameen. Thumma ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward everyone, inshallah. Ameen. So the following announcements. First of all, to I Shifa has been requested for the following people. Our respected uncle Ruknuddin Parker who always sits on the chair in front. Dr. Siddiq Parker, who is in ICU. And for Fatima Mukaddam, who is the wife of, of our respected Bilal, Nazim Mukaddam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them all shifa kamil, insha'Allah. And to I Maghfirah for all those who have passed on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them and grant them Jannah to Firdaus, insha'Allah. Please refrain from handing out cash and food outside the masjid and outside the premises. The trust board, the neighbors, and the community thank everyone for complying with this request. Kindly deliver your donations to the organizations. Jazakumullah khairan. The last few copies of the Habibia diary are available. Only 10 copies left approximately. Please get your copy now to avoid disappointment. The Urush Sharif of Hazrat Khawaja Gharib Nawaz and Hazrat Mawla Abdul Latif Qadi Siddiqui Habibi Qaddasallahu Sarumul Aziz will be commemorated here at this masjid from the 2nd to the 5th of February, inshallah. Please see the notice boards, Facebook uh, page, and the website for further details. The Habibiya Sufi Madrasa announces that registration is open until the end of January, inshallah. If you would like to uh, uh, register your child, please register now to avoid disappointment as limited space is available. Jazakumullah khair al jaza wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wal-Muslimin wa adhil nashir wa mushrikin Rabbi khfil nana bilhain bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayy 'ala as-salah Hayy 'ala Hay an al-fana Hay an al-fana Allahu akbar Allahu akbar La ilaha illallah Inna alhamdulillah Nahmaluhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu Wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi من عوض بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فيا عباد الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا إلا وأنتم مسلمون وعلموا أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد قال ودعا اللهم إني أسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم التقوى ها هنا ويشير إلى قلبه ثلاثا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وعلموا أن الله تعالى قد قال مخبرا عن رسوله الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين فاتقوا الله تعالى يا عباد الله وبادروا بالأعمال الصالحة تكونوا من الفائزين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله أستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فاستغفروا ربكم إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم احتن لنا بالخير إله بحرمة القرآن العظيم والنبي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونثني عليه الخير كله نشكره ولا نكفره ونخلع ونترك من يفجره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له 
ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله تعالى في السر والعلانية فإنه لا يخفى عليه خافية وعلموا أن الله تعالى قد أمرنا وأمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته المسبحة لقدسه وثلث بكم من برية إنسه وجنه فقال تعالى مخبرا وآمرا قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ومولانا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورضى اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين سادتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى أزواج رسول الله الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وعلى أولاده وبناته وأهل بيته أجمعين وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعلى عشرة المبشرين وعن التابعين وتابع التابعين وعلى من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر وانصر عبادك الموحدين في فلسطين وفي اليمن وفي سائر بلدان المسلمين وفي بلاد الشام وفي هذه البلاد يا رب العالمين ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجيب لكم فإن ذكر الله تعالى أعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة Please move forward, brothers. Please fill the gaps. Please fill the message from the front. Come, brothers, move forward, please. Inshallah. The last page in front. Kindly move forward. And come, fill brothers. The gaps. People are waiting outside to come inside. Please move inside, brothers. Kindly comply with the request. Please fill the gaps. Please, brothers, move forward. There's a lot of space here in front. Bismillah. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذو البيع ذلك خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون فإذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشموا في الأرض وابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لهوا فضوا إليها وتعفوك قائما قل ما عند الله خير من اللهو من التجارة والله خير الراسقين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعمل وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم والتواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم أتوب إليه ونسألك توبة ومغفرة إنه هو التواب الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام وإليك يعود السلام فحيا ربنا بالسلام ودخلنا الجنة برحمتك دار السلام تبارك ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وطعنا وقرانك ربنا وإليك المصير وإلهكم إله واحد لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض 
من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وشاء قلسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يهوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم سبحان الله الحمد لله